but typically it's because someone's trying to hide something. Okay? That's it. Okay? Nobody here is free to go until I finish with this. Alright? I've already, I've already, I've already told you once. So I'm not going to keep telling you. Alright? We're just going down the road. How old are you two gals? You what's your name? It was Spencer. He also said Dakota. All right. Spell Brianna. These are my children. Family, I'll take a walk. We get stop. I don't understand. I've already told you. I've already told you. I didn't hear you. You won't repeat yourself. I didn't hear you. I don't know. I told you. You told me I wasn't detained. You don't have any juvenile stuff outstanding, do you? Okay, what's your birthday, Brianna? Brianna, what's your birthday? Brianna, what's your birthday? Brianna, where do you live at? Is your first name Dakota or is it Spencer? Spencer, Dakota. Yes, Spencer. Spencer? Okay. Last name Nice? Huh? Last name Nice? Did you get your car out in town yet, bud? Spencer. Spencer. What's your birthday? Like I know. Stop, dude. You know me, obviously. Step this way. Step this way. Spencer, step towards me. Spencer. Yeah. Stop, yeah. What are you being? Did it kill it? Relax. 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 What the? Relax. Hey, man, that's my son. Relax. Quit being a cocksucker, man. Give me your hand. Quit being right. a cocksucker. Give me your Relax. For who? Yeah. yeah. Take my phone. This is Tell us, because what we have right now is just your son in handcuffs, obviously. Um, he's asking for a phone. They put him in a chokehold, which is an illegal use of force now. Then they put the knee on the neck, which basically nationwide police departments are saying that that's bad practice. What leads up to that? How did he even get to you guys being stopped? Um, we were just, we left the house three blocks ago, taking a walk around the neighborhood around 9, 10 at nighttime. And we walked up to an intersection. This officer pulled up and stopped. Um, looked at us, pulled in to another road, right in the middle of the road, stopped traffic, and got out and quite quit. Start asking these questions. What kind as of far questions? As our IDs and why we was there and why? So he's he's demanding identification. Yes. Because you're standing on a public easement. Yes. 
Okay, so at that point, what did you say to him? Um, I asked the officers we were being detained as a group, and he said no. Um, then I was forced to give identification with him hang, holding my hands behind my back and asked him if I was detained, and he said no. Um, and after searching me and getting my wallet and throwing it back on the ground and taking my ID, he immediately went to my son, patted him down, and took his identification. Um, during this, I've asked three times if we were being detained, and the officer refused to answer my question. Um, my youngest daughter, being 12, was pretty shook up over the whole ordeal, but he t actually told her that he could take all of us into jail. So, if I get this right, and he responded, the alleged response was to a noise complaint. That's my which assumption. Which is an ordinance. That's my assumption. I was okay. never even told. So you're out there with the family. Obviously, I mean, it shouldn't matter if you're, uh, if you're clean, sober, whatever, black or white, to be treated like that. But it's very right. clear you have a great family dynamic. You guys are all, you're the normal family. You're out walking down, and he's not even from here. So it's not like they have predisposition no, he, to him. He, he just recently come to stay with me for a little bit. He's been here about a month. Okay, so, so. you're walking down the street. This cop comes up and demands ID. Now you ask if I'm, am I free to go, am I detained? He, he won't answer you. He says you're not detained, and then he physically restrains you and removes your identification. Yes. So he's, he's violating your Fourth Amendment right to be yes. free from search and seizure. At this point, he does the same thing to me with you. So what goes to the point that, now when you were in handcuffs, is that when you were detained when he was trying to get your ID? No. No, I was just standing there with my hands behind my back because he told me to do that. Okay, so then he what, he puts you in handcuffs? Yes. So when you get to the point where you're in handcuffs, you can very clearly, you, you see you're not resisting, and you say to your father, hey, can Take you my phone. get my phone? What was your next, th did you have any idea what was happening to you? No, it just happened so fast. So fast. I mean, how, like, this video has gone viral on mul many platforms, right? So watching that video, third person, like now that you're seeing what's happening to you, what's going through your head? What's gonna happen? Were you afraid for your life? Yeah. And mom, how does it make you feel to watch that, to watch that video, to be present when this type of thing is happening to your family? Yeah, it made me really mad and upset that the cops would actually do something like that. Knowingly, he he wasn't doing anything wrong. He was just doing what they was asking him to do. Let's say, for argument's sake, he was doing something wrong. If he if he it's did something matter. wrong and he wasn't resisting, should he be treated like that? No. I mean, it's and I mean. What's, so you're watching this happen to your son, and at some point you say, babe, you don't have to watch this, just turn away. Yes, I was speaking to my 12-year-old daughter. She was bawling in, in complete dismay. She I couldn't never... imagine. I have kids myself, and I wouldn't, I don't know what, I would be lucky if I had had the composure you had. He wasn't even worried about handcuffing me. He was worried about choking me the whole time. Right. Yeah. Um, but the presence of my 12-year-old daughter being in this, I'm wondering what, you know, what her mind is every time she sees a police officer roll past the neighborhood or, you know, how much fear is in my daughter now of, of police officers that are supposed to be here to protect us. I mean, and you're, a, you're a young kid, you know, before this happened with, with Big Brother, what were your feelings on the police? Like, if you saw a police officer, what was your feelings on them? I don't know, I just, like, let it go, I didn't really care. But now, after watching this, how did it make you feel? And that's the problem. See, we see it take it only ever takes one. You see one bad cop, and now it affects an entire family dynamic. And the community is for certain rallying around you. You got almost 300 people in this live stream that are rallying around you. So, well, not only is there just one bad cop, but that one bad cop can do something like this, and the rest of them will stand right there behind him and say that it's okay. Now, well, that's why we're here today because we have one there, cop. And is another. there such thing as a good cop? Which begs the question, and I think that you're going to at least get an answer today. Because when we were here, we were recording, and we asked one of the Anderson officers, Nasal Road, what he thought about the, um, the Chauvin putting his knee on George Floyd's neck. On camera, he laughed and drove away and thought it was, you know, it was a, it was a real funny thing to laugh about. We also met Sergeant Ziegler. Now, he said to us on camera and off screen that putting a knee on someone's neck is never acceptable. He would have intervened. He thought they were wrong. So what's that? His mother went down to the jail, and they shut the door in her face. Oh, that's right. Yeah. For asking questions. Yeah. Yes. 
Well, I mean, look what happened to your son while he was asking questions. Yeah. And he was, so he was released on personal recognizance without any bail, is that correct? Yes. And what was your one charge? You have one charge that you're faced with, correct? Resisting. Resisting arrest. Guys, if you're watching, resisting arrest is a secondary charge. For example, this young gentleman could be charged with disorderly conduct and then he could get resisting arrest. But resisting, you can't be arrested for resisting an arrest that never took place. There has to be a reason that are watching before we go inside here and see if we can get some answers for you. I would like to say I'm glad there's people like you out there. No, thank you. Listen, don't you don't thank us. It's people like you that pull out your phone and record because the true definition of a hero is not someone that wears a badge or wears a cape. You know, it's people like you. Like Dante Algieri said, um, you know, the deepest depths of hell are reserved for those who maintain neutrality in a time of moral crisis. Heroes are ones that run towards, not run away. You pulled out your phone, even your little girl. You guys stood strong and stood fast. And people should know that one voice can be heard as long as people are saying it together. You know, you, you own these guys. They work for you. You don't work for them. They owe you answers. Let's see if we can get some for you. You guys want to go in? Yes, let's do this. Right.